So in the previous video, we saw that array is a very, very useful and a simple data structure, right? But let's understand where do arrays fail? What are the limitations of arrays because of which we have to invent or come up with newer data structure? There is a data structure called linked list, right? That we will learn in the next few videos. So linked list can solve some of the problems that arrays have, but I'll tell you where arrays fail first, right? Of course, every data structure has their own limitation. Linked lists also have their own limitations, right? So there is no best data structure for every problem, right? So for every problem, we have to come up with a new data structure that works. So let's take arrays themselves, right? Imagine I have a playlist. Imagine I have a playlist of songs or movies or anything. For example, here, this is a playlist for our applied AI course where uh, this is a playlist of videos. So if you notice here, this is a playlist of videos on YouTube and there are 10 videos here, right? So if I just scroll down here, if I just scroll down here, you'll see 10 videos in this playlist. This playlist is called linear algebra, which talks about some concepts in mathematics related to linear algebra, like vectors, matrices, etc. right? So now I have a playlist of size 10, right? Now let's see, let's see how arrays fail. Let's take the example of a playlist, right? So the playlist right now, let's say I have an array, okay? Let's say I have an array, an integer array. Let's take C syntax, right? Just for simplicity. But the same thing happens in almost all major programming languages. But I'll simply explain it using C because that's easier. So if I have, let's say, this 10, 10, 10 videos, right, in my playlist P. So P is my playlist. And I have basically an array of size 10, right? So if it is C, you have 0, 1, 2, so on, so forth, up to 9, right? There are 10 locations here. And in each of these locations, I'm storing the, so because this is of int type, I could store the ID, right? Maybe the ID of the first, the, the ID of the first video. Let's assume every video here has an integer ID. So now I can say my first video should be, should ha, should be the video with ID 13. Second video should be the ID with, uh, second video should be the video with ID 6. So here, what am I storing? I'm basically storing the IDs of my videos, let's say, or my songs, whatever it is, right? I'm storing some IDs, right? Now, this is all good. Here I have space. So the moment in C, the moment you declare this in C, what, what happens in C the moment you declare this, let's assume this is my memory or RAM, right? Let's assume this is my memory or RAM, whatever you want to call it as, right? Or it's also called as internal memory. As soon as you see, do this, what C programming does at runtime is it, it does, it does a very interesting thing. C programming basically creates within your RAM a space, okay? A space to store these, let's say zero, one, so on, so forth. It, it allocates space to store these 10 integers in your memory, right? That's what, that's what actually C, C programming does actually. The C programming language enables you to do this. Now here comes the problem. Imagine today I have 10, 10 items here. I've stored them, okay? Now if I want to play it, it's very, very simple. I have the 10 items. I'll play the first one, then the second one, then the third one, because there is ordering here. Remember, there is ordering. In an array, if you look at it, if, what we studied with, uh, with arrays is, arrays has this relationship called ordering, right? Because there is ordering, there is this simple ordering based on the index value. I can play the first video after this, uh, before the second video, before the third video and so on and so forth, because I want to play these videos in this order. Otherwise, nobody understands what I'm talking about, right? So very elegantly, arrays give us the ordering, right? That, that's why we're storing this playlist information in an array because I want to play the first video, which is which has an ID of 13. Then I want to play the second video, which has an ID of six and so on and so forth. Because arrays provide me this ordering information internally because of the properties of array as a data structure, right? That's why I'm storing these IDs of the movies or the videos that I want to play in this playlist. All that is good, but here comes the problem, right? Now, where does the problem arise? Let's look at where the problem arises. Now I have 10 videos. Let's say right now I have 10 videos. Okay. And I have this, I have this variable P, which is also an integer array of size 10, right? From 0, 1, 2, up to 9. 
very very nice very simple very good now comes the problem if i want to add if i want to add more videos let's assume i made more videos let's assume i made more videos okay on linear algebra i already have 10 videos here let's say i want to add the 11th video and the 12th video okay suppose that the after my 10th video let's assume i want to add some five more videos let's say let's say i want to add i want to add five more videos to the to the same playlist so here i have my playlist right from 0 to 10 if i want to add five more playlist what do i do because i don't have space in my array my array is only of size 10 hence i can't just add five more values here in c programming language what do you do you basically create a new array let's call that array p1 of size 15 and you'll copy each of these values into p1 right because you want you want, see what you're literally doing here is because your array size is pre initialized to 10 you can't just add five more videos to your playlist so if you store your playlist as an array right if you are using the array data structure to load to store your playlist information you will be limited by the maximum size that you have allocated here right you just can't increase it if you increase it you'll have to copy all of this information to a new array which could be time taking right because you have to copy the ids of each of them now when i say int p115 right i again i'll copy this 13 here i'll copy 5 here i'll keep copying up to 9 right i'll just copy this whole vector or whole array of size 10 here right and here i'll add my new five videos ids right okay so when i want to extend the size of my playlist to five more videos which we often do right we keep adding new videos to playlists on our uh, on our smartphones right whether it is a video or an audio we keep adding new stuff to our playlists right the big problem with arrays especially in a programming language like c is that the memory the memory to store the elements is already allocated and you cannot grow dynamically this you cannot grow the size you cannot grow the size of the array you cannot grow the size of the array dynamically so what do i mean by dynamically here as and when i need it right let's say you initially i had 10 videos in my playlist i want to add five more i just can't do it i just can't take my array p and just add five more locations i just can't do that i'll have to create a new array p1 copy all of them here and create five more locations which could be very time taking so arrays cannot grow dynamically you cannot just simply increase the size of the array dynamically right so you're limited so while, while arrays are phenomenal right they give you very nice ordering information there are lots of operations that they enable us to do their size cannot be changed dynamically that's their biggest drawback right very simple imagine imagine you are using an array as a data structure to store your playlists whether it's audio on your smartphone or videos on youtube you are always limited by let's assume initially there is another problem you might argue here that why don't i initialize my array to a very large size let's say 250 let's say there is a problem here also because the moment you do this what's happening inside your ram so you could argue why don't i just allocate a very large space you are taking up lot of space in your ram to store your p right you're because you're because you said the size of the array is 250 right there will be there will be enough space to store 250 ids or integers now if your playlist is only of size 10 let's assume i have a playlist suppose i have a playlist of size 10 right by allocating space for 250 by allocating space for 250 i'm wasting the space of 240 integers right that that's the other problem if you just allocate if you allocate too small a space you can't keep adding new songs to your playlist or new videos to your playlist on the other hand if you allocate too large a space there is a lot of space or lot of memory which is just being not used and wasted right so either way there is a problem that's because 
for most arrays in most programming languages, especially like C, when you declare an array like this, right, you are going to assign the space needed to store all of these 250 values, which you cannot change dynamically, right, which you cannot change dynamically. That's the size of the array cannot be changed dynamically, especially in C, which is a limitation. To get around that limitation, we'll come up with a new data structure called linked list. But as everything in life, there is no free lunch. Okay. There are some advantages of arrays, which linked lists do not have. There are some advantages of linked lists that arrays don't have. When you're solving a real world problem, like designing the right data structure to store the IDs of movies or songs in your playlist, you have to make these trade-offs, right? So let's assume my task is to design the optimal data structure to store some playlists, either on YouTube or your, on your smartphone. Arrays work, but arrays have this problem that either you'll run out of space or you'll be wasting a lot of space. One of these two would happen, right? So linked list is an interesting data structure, which we will explore in the next few videos on how linked list can, can be a better data structure to store the information that we have in playlists, right? What, are the, what is one of the most important things in playlist that I want to play these songs in an order? That's, that's why we even chose an array to store the information in a playlist, right? So we learn about linked lists, of course, like everything, there are pros and cons that we will learn in the next few videos.